I've just finished giving 9 hours of lectures around PySpark to university students, smaller groups of 20 students. Most of them have some background in programming, but they've never heard about functional programming. And in PySpark, we have to talk about map and reduce, which is a way to distribute functions to different elements of a distributed list. If I don't grab their attention, I'm pretty sure that all of my students are just going to... <laughs> and it's very hard to grab the attention of sleeping students again. So I wanted to make a lectures where students would participate more. They would help me edit the code and multiply all of the elements of the list by two or do a word count. So let me show you how I incorporate Streamlit inside my lectures so I can have my students participate. I've got my VS Code editor on the left and my Streamlit web app on the right that is running in real time. The only thing I tell them about Streamlit, each time you see an st.write in the code, imagine it is like a print to the web app. And to demonstrate this immediately, I write st.write of hello world or hello students and that would display in the web app immediately. This is also my way of checking that Streamly is running correctly. Sometimes I have to swiftly go and check the always we run on save if I forgot to put it inside my configuration. This is my way of telling them Streamly is transparent don't focus on Streamlit. It's only for me a way to print the results in real time. I know I've got some students that are not familiar with Python. First thing I do is show them how to build a list. So I would write a range and ask them, what do you think is the output of this list? And they would tell me, I think it's like a list of 0 to 9 or 0 to 10. They would see the result in the web app and ta-da, this is it. This, you're right, you're very good. <laughs> PySpark is a library for distributed computing. If they remember my lectures, they know that PySpark manipulates what we call RGDs or resilient distributed datasets. And we need a way to bring this list into an RGD so we can manipulate it with map and reduce and stuff. So I would ask them, what do you think is the method? How do we use this Spark context to generate an RGD from this list? They know that we use sc.parallelize of list to build an RGD. I would ask them, what do you think happens when we print this object? This is the thing I love with Streamlit, I can start writing the st.write of rdd, but the answer doesn't display on the app until I save the script. So I can wait for my student's answer. Is the rdd really going to be displayed? Because an rdd is supposed to be 50 terabytes of data. Is it only going to download the 51st element? Maybe a first partition or something? I'm not really sure. This is where we debate together. When they've got the answers, they tell me and I just save and ta-da! Ah, here's the answer. And I realized that no, we've got a pointer to a distributed list somewhere in a Spark cluster, but that's it. There's no downloading data. This is normal. You don't want to download 50 terabytes of data. We're using what we call lazy computation. So we only compute the RDD that we really need. And if they really want the results of their RDD, they can use the collect method. The next question I ask them is how do we transform this RDD? How do we, for example, multiply all of the elements by two? And they know we have to use the RDD.map method, but they don't really know how to use it. We've just mentioned it in the lecture. The other thing I use Streamlit for is for displaying the help method. You've got this st.help in Streamlit that will display the documentation from this function immediately in the web app. So they see that we need to use Use an anonymous function. How do we multiply all of the elements by two? Okay, lambda of x, what does x represent? Present. Is it each number? Is it the partition of the number? I'm able to discuss with my students what do they think each part of the function is and then we can experiment together and some of them may even ask can we return something else like a list or a tuple or a more python object and this is where I usually improvise because Streamit is doing live reloading so I can just type what do you think happens if we return a list instead so we can just return the list and then see it in real time and if you are giving lectures around Python code, I really do recommend using Streamlit because the feedback is immediate and Streamlit doesn't really go in your way. You're still writing classic Python code and every time you need to print something to the web app, you just put stwrite instead. And this is it. The students understand it and they can participate in building the code with you. So if you're a Python teacher, don't hesitate to copy my way of doing. I'll see you in the next video. Happy Streamlitting!